Hi everyone, Dorota Palicka, International Nail Artist and Educator here. And today we are gonna be playing with some one stroke flowers. They always look amazing and I get you step by step how to paint those amazing flowers with some new glitter encapsulation. So have a preview of it in here. Beautiful color combinations and I hope you really enjoy learning it. So let's start. I've got my tips ready and first of all we want to start with the background so I'm using 277 color. Uh, actually some of you have asked me to show first of all what kind of products you're gonna need for the design. So you need the gel polish in a pink color that's 277, the sponge for the ombre uh, form and then also the, um, the master uh, Oh, that's not the Demaster, there we are. Demaster one stroke brush and also the D-liner brush and some acrylic paints uh, and I'm gonna use the magenta uh, and a white one. Uh, so first, oh, and also some glitter of course and we've got uh, two new ones, so the white and the fairy dust, like they are awesome, absolutely awesome. So first of all, slap the colors in and then grab the sponge and with the sponge uh, you want to always remove the fluff which might be um, on the on the actual sponge you don't want to transfer that you could see it I did have some fluff in there and then we are gonna gently uh, just add some background there like I don't want too much of it uh, just a little bit you know very faded uh, pink let's cure it okay and then do that in here as well so very faded pink I'm not too bothered like to for it to be perfect really and you can see it I'm start getting fluff it's a time to remove it and then cook the steep do the same in here it's very washed background and uh, if I would be working on a client not necessarily you have to paint the nails white you could do it on the base and then I would use the milky pink gel uh, because it is like uh, milky so it's showing off the designs really well uh, okay next step is you want to grab either some base gel quite often I do it uh, with the base gel or with the top coat and I've got old top coat I hope I have I do have very little in there um, and I'm gonna dip in in the glitter when I use like um, those uh, fine glitters you don't have to necessarily encapsulate them really deep into the design you can do it uh, you can do it uh, just with the top coat and that still works let me do it this way because honestly I have no top coat left there oh that is perfect and you can see it as my glitter top coat I always have one glitter top coat so I'm just picking up those fairy dust and look what is happening in here this is such a beautiful uh, look let's cook it so we will do two which are very fine and that's those ones it's a matter of the seconds and I love it for a French and baby boomers like on my clients and then I will do one with those larger particles so I need to clean my brush you could also use the gel brush for it as well for me it's always just faster actually doing it with the top coat and then I'm picking up those larger glitter. More top coat. And you can see it, I'm trying to spread it at kind of even. Um, but of course, some glitter might stick out. So I will show you what we have to do anyway for painting. Okay, so cure it, clean my brush because I need to swap to the other glitter. Then pick up the top coat again. Sorry for doing it, but like uh, I don't want to actually pick up my clean top coat. Uh, even if it's a second layer, there might be some loose glitter in there and you really don't want to dip in that in your good top coat. So I'm squeezing the last bits and pieces of my old top coat. And sometimes if I'm missing the top coat, what I could do it is I could actually put it uh, a tiny bit of the good one into the old one. And that's what I might need to do. It. There is lots in there, just need to wait longer. Oh, oh, there we are. It's coming, it's coming. Just leave it that way. Uh, and then I'm applying quickly a second layer of the top coat 
to make sure this glitter is encapsulated. Okay, so that's that's how I encapsulate the glitter. And uh, it's so easy and quick to do it on the clients this way. Like I find that that's just works magic for me. For those kind of designs. And you could do it, I do that, and I used to do that like uh, many times for my gel polish clients. Uh, they are always the most difficult uh, for, uh, I've got some black glitter on doing the Eastern Hill Art with this top coat ages ago. Um, they are the clients which sometimes want those kind of glitters or they come in with the pictures of the stuff which was done with the hard gel and you're kind of trying to think like how I'm going to recreate that on the gel and bottle nails or like on the nails uh, with the gel polish only. So this is the best way to do that. Okay, my tips are cooked and they are ready for the next step. So my next step is because I want to paint some one stroke flowers, I need to bath the surface anyway. So what will happen is that will just smooth out any glitter imperfections like any rough surface uh, because I would do this step anyway uh, for my clients so like make sure they are all buffed honestly try it like over French guys it looks unbelievable like so nice um, and I like those kind of universal glitter because this glitter will look uh, fantastic on any color like you could apply it absolutely any color and it's so delicate that just goes with everything okay this tip is ready I can put it on the side for the next step. This one actually encapsulated really smooth, even if it was a larger particles. I'm quite, uh, quite impressed, I will say. So just enough buff surface so I can paint with the paints easy. And then another one. My blue tack is holding really well today. <laughs> but also I'm careful to don't scratch my nails. They are maybe 10 days old. I'm terrible um, for having a scratches on them. And I just say it in the wrong time. That's my blue tack is holding well. I will have to hide also those black uh, dust, um, like black glitter from the Eastern nails. <laughs> Okay, perfect. They are ready for the next step. So I'm just going to squeeze out my paints and I definitely want magenta because it's my favorite one. So squeeze out magenta, clean the top with the baby wipe and then I want some white. Come on white. Okay, it's at the end so if I've got the paint at the end it's okay Patrick if I've got the paint on the end I would just uh, thank you so much he's like quickly to jump I would just uh, go in and grab it, it with the spatula uh, I don't bin those bottles because there is uh, still quite a decent amount of the paint in there and then I just clean my spatula and black color like honestly this is the set I have it how long Three, four, 2019? Oh, the, the, the one. <laughs> yeah, so, so like I'm five years, change. like some paints I've got five years. And those ones, because that's from the previous range, they are like, I don't know, 10 years old. <laughs> so if you get the paint, like it will last you years, years. <laughs> Uh, and they are still good to go like um, you could probably like I mean if you've got a paint which is 10 years old you could probably add a drop of the water in it um, but uh, yeah they are they are all good now I'm just grabbing my demaster brush and getting it um, ready so I make sure there is no old paint on it like uh, I wanted it to be soft in it by the uh, water and then another brush we want to grab is the D-liner brush Again, I need to soften it because it was used in a paint before. That's us ready. Okay, so the design is really simple. Black and uh, green. I'm just mixing it and we are going to do some sort of branches. Uh, like I feel like it's, it's really simple but quite effective. So I'm just painting nice branches here. Yeah.
you can even twist some of them. Okay, that's plenty. So nice and twist at once. Make sure I hide this uh, black spot. And uh, painting with green only can be not as visible. That's why I have introduced a drop of the black so I can do with finer lines. Like I find that is always a better option. Okay, D Master, are you ready? White and magenta, of course, my favorite mix. I had some here and there, so I'm just re-picking my paint. And I still have this hair here. Come on, go away. I've got it out, okay. And we can start painting the first flowers. So I want the flowers to be large and small. So here on the bottom, nice and large petal. Another one and another one. I like to paint the branches first always because then it is much easier to um, to do it than other way around because we can also cover them with the flowers and that's absolutely fine. And then there is also petals on the bottom. Okay, I want another one in here. Thanks, Patrick. Oh. oh, for moving the camera because I was poking it. Did you not feel the shakes? Mm. No, it's okay if it's in my view. Sorry. As long as everyone else can I see it. Have have yeah, I know you do. Yeah, when I record, you get like an... Um, so terrible view when Patrick records all he cares is like that's everything is in a camera <laughs> so obviously I can't see what I'm doing <laughs> okay another one so never easy so inside that I'm just painting One more petal. Okay, as we come up on the top, we want to go smaller. But big enough to cover this black dot. <laughs> Guys, you have to learn it. Like, you do really have to learn this. Because it's so pretty. And look, that's I'm just doing like on little touches of the brush. So first thing when you're doing one stroke you need to learn how to pick up your paint and how to mm, prep your brush. So my brush like with each pick like I wanted it to be really nice and flat um, because when we're painting with the acrylic paints like um, the brush can sometimes uh, the paint can sometimes dry on the brush and then um, it wouldn't paint as nice. So like once or sometimes I have to kind of reshape my brush to be able to get a nice results and then re-pick up my paint. And nice and slow, do not rush one stroke, like you really want to paint it nice and slow. 
also you cannot have too much for water in it and you cannot have uh, too little water the water has to be perfect now because i have dip in my brush in the water i've got too much of it that's why i'm repicking my paint a few times uh, so i can dry out a little bit of this water I'm just gonna touch up this one because that's the biggest one. Okay, I can squeeze leaves in here. So let's put this one on the side and look again. So we are painting petals. Here, when I'm painting over the previous color, ideally you want to wait for it to dry and then go over a second time. I can do the bottom. You can see my paint is start getting a bit too dry again. If I want to paint something very small, I'm not using full brush. I'm just using some parts of it. Okay, and then here one more, just a top part of the brush and just a top part of the brush. Honestly, all my clients just love those kind of designs. Okay, I'm getting messy, so I need to clean the things. <clears throat> I'll clean my brush and then pick up the paint again. You like to poke me today, don't you? Huh? Because <laughs> you're not paying attention, you're poking me today all the all the time. <laughs> okay. Okay, just a quick touches. And then I can start adding more. On the bottom here. So my white always goes old side. Then let's touch up this petal here and this one there so we can cover some of those green something bigger here okay. 
and here is another tip guys for you for those who are just starting with the one stroke so first of all if you start painting on the actual tip you might have not enough room and you might be scared to break the design that was my problem i was i wanted to paint the flowers so badly that I was scared to do the things and I was scared to break the design I'm painting and I didn't get the results I wanted. So once I start, I'm gonna show you actually in this video, for those of you who have lasted such a long time and watch it till the last design. Let me just, just a tip of the brush. Beautiful. And I need something more in here. That is good. Okay, for those of you who have lasted this long, I need to show you this. So when you're painting the flowers, you're scared to, to do the things. But what I want you to do is take your paint and see what's happened if you go with the brush like this. What's happened if you go like this? What's happened if you go like this? Like, try it. What's happened if you do it like this? Try different movements because this way you can discover some sort of uh, nice petals like and different things. Uh, let's turn that into flower now if it's possible. So you can go like this. You can add something there. <laughs> this is actually a challenge now. Let's turn splashes into flower. Okay, hmm. hmm, actually it is possible, everything is possible. Just let me mix my paint before I break it. But anyway, like even if you break it, it's okay, you had some exercise. I hope someone doesn't start watching this uh, part halfway through it, because then they will think, gosh, what she's painting. <laughs> She's trying to turn the squiggle, squiggles into a flower. Mm. Come on, let me see something. So what's happened here is I'm painting over not fully dry paint, but I'm getting there. So always another thing is do not rush it because if you do rush it, you will paint over the wet paint and the things wouldn't work for you. Another petal. This is actually gonna turn into a nice flower. <laughs> Patrick is laughing, are you? <laughs> Not yet. Can you back to the design? No, yes. because this is a good exercise. Try it, guys, play it. Like, don't try to paint the flower. Just, like, don't watch anything. Just keep adding something into it and you will get it, like, you will feel the brush, you will have a chance to play with the things. He's bored because he wants to go to the gym and actually it's the first time, first time he's gonna take me as well, science, oh my this goodness, year. this year. No, last year I wasn't in as well because we was doing salon. We must be. Have we? Ah, yes, I was in. Okay, so, see, I, I am always getting a nice and beautiful flower. That was challenging. I believe it. You proceeded to wipe off and, and start again. Start again so. No, because this will be unusual flower. Normally, I wouldn't paint those kind of flower because you don't start the flower with the splash of the color. Okay, and now... I want to perfect my flower and I just go over it again once it's dry. But let me do another petal on the bottom. If 
we don't finish this design, we don't go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I'm searching for excuses. Yeah, I think so. Uh -huh. No, I need to finish that design, but no, no, I want to show you this one because that will be a, such a pretty flower once it's finished. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go over it again. Nice and slow. This petal is nice, this petal is nice. I don't like this part here. The, the only thing, remember guys, you cannot touch wet paint. If you do touch it, like if you go over wet paint, with a fresh paint you will just make a mess of it. That was my big biggest problem as well, like when I start painting one stroke I was just rushing the things too much and uh, I would smudge what I have previously painted. It is a nice flower. I'm getting there. And then this petal just doesn't doesn't go with the things, so my paint has to be really properly in, and I'm just gonna add another petal over it, nice and pretty one. And ta da! We've got flower here. <laughs> okay, so um, green, so. We need to add some leaves and the leaves you can paint it so many different ways um, I actually should do some video like just like uh, basic kind of shapes because if you break them first then you can start painting the flowers okay I've got my white and green happy with that happy with that I'm never too fussy, I don't think so, like when I'm picking up the colors for it. Uh, so I want those leaves to be straight. And tiny. Go back to the design. But without of showing those um, this movement, some some people cannot maybe get it right. I think that was very useful. This is how you learn. Okay, and then <laughs> my funny flower. <laughs> With couple leaves. We are... I'm laughing at you. Okay, that's enough. Detail time. Ta -da! So we are gonna add some black, lots of water in. <clears throat> My brush is not behaving yet. <laughs> I think I don't want to go to the gym, that's why I'm painting so long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
No, I need to. It has been really bad here. Okay, I'm just adding this black. <clears throat> on the inside the flowers Then clean my brush and swap to the white. Let's start with my ugly flower <laughs> so it can turn pretty. You know what? It actually looks a little bit like a lily almost. If I could do it uh, green inside. So I'm just doing couple shakes, thin line, and then I'm going to go and do couple dots around it. See, it's really nice flower. I'm just highlighting some places. Yeah, I couldn't see it, but now I see it a bit more. That's it could be a lily flower. Okay, that's enough. detail here so I usually try to find those nice bands parts and some of it is always like on thicker some of it is thinner you don't have to always um, like outline it um, I actually don't like to do too much outline um, you just want to really highlight some nice places And then once we do the top coat, you will be able to see how much prettier the things are. It just kind of make it it pops. I actually like my lily. Okay, clean my brush again.
and then couple dots. Okay, that's enough. So let's stop coat them. Look, the lily is the nicest one now. <laughs> Once we added the detail. Okay, top coat in. Oh, cover it with the nice pink. That's my favorite pink, definitely. So I'm just top coating it. Look, this is so pretty lily. And then cook it. Always so much nicer once we do the top coat. And look at the glitter like is popping out as well. Like it looks so stunning. And then I can show you the entire look we have done it today. You can see it like the acrylic paint is covering the glitter. That's why the, I like it so much because the flowers are still standing out. Definitely very easy and also sound friendly design, I would say, uh, because it doesn't take that long time. <clears throat> so the first one is ready. <laughs> And the one which we did it as the last one. Let's place it here. Look how that is so pretty. And then the other one. So that was the chunky glitter. Actually, I need to put this one here. Chunky glitter in the middle. And then the small glitter on the sides. And our lily. So that's what we have created uh, today. And I hope, guys, you did really enjoy it. Look at the sparkles. Uh, I'm sending you huge glittery hugs. And see you in the next one. Bye.